We are live. And before I get to uh, reviewing uh, these shoes, uh, let me first start off by saying I'm uh, about 5'6", and I weigh about 118 pounds. Um, my 10K personal best is 37.09, and my half marathon personal best is 84.27. Uh, I wear between um, 8 and 9.5 uh, and U.S., and this right foot is a little smaller than this left foot. This right foot has a neutral uh, gait, and this one uh, has pronates mildly. Okay. The reason why I'm making this video is because I actually just bought this pair of uh, Lunar Elites today. And the reason why I bought this pair of Lunar Elites today was because I uh, injured myself uh, last uh, Sunday in these. These are the... Um, uh, Mizuno Wave Elixir 4s, and these, in fact, are of all of these shoes, um, are the cheapest. And what happened was I was running um, 15 kilometers, uh, um, 3 by 5k intervals, to be exact. And what happened towards the end was my gait was very sloppy, and uh, as my gait started to sag, this uh, part over here kept striking the ground, and um, it was really annoying. I, um, I could feel it, and I could feel that this wasn't going to uh, help my uh, ligaments at all, this uh, repetitive striking. And at last, I, I felt something snap over here, and I think I strained my hamstring. So I realized that these shoes uh, were pretty unreliable. I should have... Uh, uh, perform more research before buying these shoes. These were about 560 Hong Kong dollars, and um, I don't recommend them because uh, over long distances, um, as your gait sags, uh, this uh, heel compartment starts to strike, and um, that puts you at risk of injury. So I don't recommend these um, Wave Elixir 4s. Um, Prior to that, I actually purchased these uh, Reebok Taycan NK2s, and they're all right, um, but I noticed that, uh, number one, when I started running in them, um, the overlay uh, didn't provide enough support. So when I was running, this overlay part would start chafing against um, my right foot, and that was bothersome. Uh, in addition, when I started running on my toes, I noticed that, um, well, I started to chafe over here as well, uh, some hot spots over here by my toes. So there's not really much support over here uh, in the toes uh, when you're running on them. And uh, in addition, the overlays don't provide enough uh, well, support to keep this part from imploding on your, uh, on your feet. So... Again, uh, with these two pairs, I, uh, I need to do more research next time. Um, that's, that's the lesson that I learned. Um, these Nike Run Avants, I actually just purchased a few weeks ago, and I heard good things about them on um, Runner's World. Um, and when, indeed, when I put them on, I was really impressed by the uh, lunar foam, this lunar light foam. Uh, foam. And uh, wow, what a really soft ride um, in these shoes. Uh, however, after I put about like 50 miles on them, I started to notice um, pain in my uh, right toe. It felt as though uh, my toe was broken, in fact. And I was like, what's going on here? And then I started to realize that something was going on with these shoes. And as you can see over here, the shoes, the upper part is actually imploding. It's as this part... Uh, as this part of the overlay starts to collapse on itself as I tie the laces tighter, the overlay starts to implode. And um, as a result, I can show you over here. There's this part over here, the side of the shoe that juts in, and it kept chafing this part of my toe. And obviously, uh, naturally, over uh, the course of several miles, uh, dozens of minutes, uh, it starts to hurt. So, uh, small wonder after every run in these shoes, uh, with you know the toe box imploding, 
uh, and the rest of the overlay just kind of uh, falling in upon itself, it would feel as though this part of my toe was bro uh, was broken. So um, I knew something was wrong. Uh, and as you can see, you know, there's not much overlay support here. Uh, it just falls in basically on itself. So at last, I really did my research, and um, I was very diligent in um, trying to find a shoe that would offer the same kind of cushioning, but would provide more support over here, uh, particularly so the toe box wouldn't collapse upon itself. So I ended up buying these Lunar Elites, and these, this pair is actually the most expensive out of all of these uh, shoes uh, that I'm reviewing. And these Lunar Elites cost about 100 US dollars, but I think it's money well worth sp uh, spending because the overlays here, you can see the overlays here, um, protect the toe box. They actually protect your, uh, your toes from the toe box uh, imploding like, like this. So these shoes don't, won't implode over here. In addition, the overlays over here, um, this, this particular overlay over here, um, this thing that surrounds the laces also provides structure for the shoe. And the fly wire definitely uh, provides, again, the support that this part of the shoe needs so it won't fall in like uh, the Nike Run Avance. And that's really, really important for me that this stays upright and doesn't fall uh, because I have small feet and obviously, you know, uh, there are a lot of chafing problems here with these Run Avance. So basically for an extra 20 bucks, I upgrade from this to this and I get the the overlays, the fly wire, the, uh, the overlay here and over here in the toe box to basically keep this uh, as a running shoe um, while I'm running. Uh, the Lunar Light Foam uh, provides a very cushy ride and uh, I ran in them this evening um, for 1600 uh, meter intervals and I was running about uh, running each mile around 524 and I didn't feel anything over here so uh, I'm pretty happy that uh, my legs still in pretty good shape the ligaments uh, aren't too damaged I guess and uh, this uh, dynamic support as well has some use but um, again uh, the extra twenty dollars is is well I mean, worth spending for these overlays because they protect your feet from the implosions uh, in addition, what's good about these Nike shoes is the fact that there's no uh, footbridge, and so you avoid, it's just flat here, and it's flat here. You avoid this, uh, this problem over here, that little jut, jutting out part striking the ground as your gait falters. Uh, actually, uh, finally, um, I'm a big fan of these Nike free uh, 5.0s, and uh, I've had these. I've worn the 3.0s as well, and um, I really like the fit. It's quite nice. Um, it's good for like tempo training, and um, yeah, I've had no problems with these shoes. Um, again, I guess it's because there's they're supposed to, you know, wrap around my feet like a warm blanket, basically. So I've been happy with these shoes. Uh, I'm thus far happy with these shoes, and so I think I'll use these Nike Freeze for um, speed work, and I'll use these uh, as my everyday trainers. Uh, I'm not sure about these shoes. Again, uh, each of these shoes um, have some fundamental flaws in them, which uh, put me at risk of uh, injury. So it pays to do your research, and uh, it pays to actually run in them for at least 50 miles to figure out, you know, um, well, whether there's some, like, fatal flaws in the design of these shoes. So uh, keep your feet safe, eh? And I, I guess that's about it. Um, so it's actually worth paying a lot of money for, uh, for shoes sometimes. You know, I never thought that Nike would, you know, actually provide something, but the, there's... There's actual value uh, in paying the extra $20 to get this rather than getting these uh, Nike Renovants.